But there are a couple of other things that people really didn't spend a lot of time thinking about, except it was inherently somewhat obvious. Uh, but it's important to understand the impact sometimes. And so business productivity is one of them, both from the point of view of the IT team who's deploying these things. How much time does it take them? They're already busy and stressed out. How easy is it for them to run these tests and make use of them? And what we found with phishing assessments is actually really easy to run, really easy to get some data because it's every time somebody clicks on a link, they actually get some feedback and they, they get the data and they expect people will actually um, learn from the types of things that uh, they're clicking on and the landing pages that they get to. So when we see the productivity um, impact for IT people, we see, okay, well, if, if it's easy for them to do, then yeah, let's look at close, closer, more closely to uh, doing phishing assessments using these tools. And we also have to take into account, how does it impact the productivity of the whole team? So everybody that's getting these messages has to spend a bit of time analyzing it and responding to it. And you know, it seems really easy and nice in the traditional phishing simulations that all these messages just come into people's inboxes. They don't have to take time and go do training somewhere for an hour and then uh, come back and get back to their job, change context. So the, the productivity aspect of phishing assessments actually seemed pretty attractive because it was easy for the IT team. It was easy for people to kind of just deal with uh, incoming message and get on with their work. And then after that, we also have to consider what are the cultural repercussions? And we really didn't see this initially, um, but I actually saw it you know, in some of my early projects that I did with uh, customers on phishing assessments. And to give an example, um, there's a few here that have come up in the last few years. So GoDaddy last year uh, got in the news because they used a, a holiday bonus as a, an incentive for you know trying to get people to click on these links. And uh, of course, during COVID, that's seen as kind of insensitive. Um, there was a lot of backlash. People went on social media and it was a PR disaster, really. Um, similarly, the Chicago Tribune did the same kind of thing. They offered $10,000 bonuses. Um, and again, people were enraged. Um, and a more recent one is uh, the ICF Next. It's a marketing uh, company. They promised vaccinations uh, in their phishing test messages. And that was actually not great either. Uh, people were feeling that was really insensitive, you know, bad taste, um, et cetera. So, you know, the, the feedback coming from people was, you know, geez, are these things really, you know, a, a problem now? And interestingly, one of the reporters went and talked to one of the vendors and said, well, what about these things? Your customers are, are doing these things and it's causing them all kinds of pain and, and PR disasters. And the best the vendor could say was, well, you have to be really careful about what kind of messages you actually put in these things. You know, otherwise, you know, you could get some uh, blowback. So they're trying to minimize the, uh, the real risks. It really is a, a problem. And we're going to see more of these um, going forward. So I'm going to go a little deeper into what causes these things and how we're going to uh, try to address them.